but they'll come after this guy. This one is gonna come after. Who the hell told you tonight was open mic night, bitch? That's how they were coming to your brand. He said that about mommy. He told you it was open mic night. Let's see. No, she's not. Azumi, she's on stardom, only 21. New Japan wrestling, you guys don't know. She had the best match with Stephanie Vacor at Windy City Chicago World. Romy won. Speaking of which, that was last week, Windy City, where Jack Perry, Moxley, and Puck, and Moxley won the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. How was that event of uh, New Japan, Windy City? I get a chance to go. Here's the raw figure. Dynasty has a stack car, bro. It will be the motor. City Machine Guns will be there. One of the best tag teams that still is competing today. I was, y'all say I respect women's wrestling. I'm not a tool. Okay? Mommy's the hippest wrestler since Paige. Now, Mommy wants to just because I'm a dude doesn't mean I can't get props to revolution women's. Yeah, I just gave Alexa a prop. I think gave her to you deserve it. I just gave her a prop. Facts Romy one. I love the women's sometimes more than the main stretch NXT. Yeah, NXT got unlimited talent and it's stacked even with Britney. I'm oh, sorry, Tiffany Strang come to uh right now. That's you, bro, my guy. She gives the buddy now. Yep, that's her fiance. Carmella was a mediocre sloppy wrestler. Well, Carmella started out as a valet, became a wrestler later. She really won a wrestler to begin with. The new WWE Tag Team Times are epic. I love it. Definitely. Wendy City was with especially Jack Perry's interest. Yeah, I heard Jack Perry's the number one merchandise seller with scapegoat shirt in New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's crazy. He's the number one seller. But yeah, um, Alexa, she definitely. She also mentioned her dream match. Um, you know, it's another interview of her. Another interview of her. Um, I think she was on on Chris Van Fleet, but she mentioned her whole dream match. If I want to see what her dream match was, you guys for me a few more minutes. I will get that up for you guys. I said something. I, I'm pretty sure it was like, like it, I felt like Ricky Bobby. I was just like, I don't know, doing my hands. Like, I was just very awkward. <laughs> it's so good to see you. You too. I like that you brought the championship with you. Always. Never leaves my side. People don't know this, but you actually have to travel with this. Oh, yeah. Every time I go through TSA, it always gets pulled out. It's my favorite, too, because, um, I've been telling the story all morning. Anytime it goes through the metal detector, the W lights up like a Christmas tree, right? So they know what it is. Yeah. And every time they pull it up, they're like, oh, what's this? Is this some kind of fighter or something? And then they, they recognize what it is and they're like, oh, Jim over here. He's a big fan. Jim, come on over. And it's always like a big production every time I travel, but it's worth it. And then they're like, do you know The Undertaker? Oh, yeah. Like, do you know John Cena? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> So this act, but it goes home with you as well. Absolutely, it goes home with me, travels with me everywhere I go, and it goes. Wow. We've been following your Instagram. We've been uh, catching up on Larry Steve. He seems to be doing very well. He's so good. He's so chunky. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Who's looking after Larry Steve right now? Uh, my aunt. Okay. Yeah, my family lives uh, literally down the street from me, so there's oh. always someone home with the animals because you know Larry Steve needs constant attention. He is the diva of the house. Since you live in Orlando, how often are you at Disney? Oh, at least two to three times a month. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's way more than I would have expected. Yeah, it's, it's the problem. I mean, when I was in NXT, I was there every Sunday because we get Sundays off. And so yeah. this time I'm there about two or three times a month. And how often are like you not able to like get in lines because people are recognizing you? Oh, never, never. I no one's recognizing you. No, I, well, I get recognized, yeah. but I always stand in the line. So I'm never there early enough to get the fast passes. I never plan ahead. It's just more of like, a, I'm going to go to Disney today. Mm. But you have to plan your fast passes like days ahead of time now with how crazy everything is, especially with Toy Story World just opening up. I still got to do that. But yeah, I always stand in the lines. I'm that person. I'll stand in like a two-hour line and think nothing of it. Oh. 
Speaking of the championship, whose idea was it for the pose? Because your pose with the title is, it's very legendary. Thank you. It was actually, uh, so when I did the Harley Quinn cosplay, I did the same thing with my little studded belt. Mm -hmm. And um, Murphy actually suggested, he was like, why don't you hold the title like that? And it was funny because he was like standing in the kitchen, like doing the pose and like, he was the one who came up with it and I've just used it ever since. Like, but this is the type of stuff that you probably have to run by Triple H or Vince and say, oh, really? I just kind of did it. <laughs> oh, I'm going to do it. If they don't like <laughs> it, eh, we'll that, see. That's how it kind of goes. I'm like, well, I'm just going to do it. And if they, have a, if they don't like it, they'll tell me, you know, they'll be like, oh, that doesn't work. But it's just something that I've done. And I just always figure it might as well, you know? I uh, interviewed Rhonda two days ago on Friday. I was in LA for mile 22. And I told her I was interviewing you here today, this morning. And she said, tell Alexa, this is a direct quote. I'm not saying this, so please don't beat me up. She said, tell Alexa, I'm gonna kick that stupid pink hair off her head. She's just upset because she was suspended because she's a loose cannon. That's all. What's it been like working with Rhonda just all around? It's been great. You know, she's great. She's a, she's a, a really good asset to our women's evolution. And I think she's just what we need right now because you know, we have women from every background and I think Rhonda's background helps bring a lot of legit. Now I gotta stop Alexa that she is not a great asset to the women's division. She seemed like that, but Rhonda was a complete waste of time, especially how now she's getting on WWE, saying all the stuff and across the allegations with Drew Gulak. So maybe she seemed like a great asset in the beginning, but definitely not now. Waste of space. Let's continue. Legitimacy to our women's evolution. You said it. Evolution. When did it go from being a revolution to an <laughs> evolution? Um, I think after the revolution was started, it became the evolution. Mm -hmm. We all had that same question too, because <laughs> it started being called the revolution and then changed to evolution. We we're all like, oh, when did that happen? So, because yeah. for us wrestling evolution. fans, evolution has a def another meaning, you know? That was that was Triple H and Ric Flair and Batista and Orton. Yes, but now it's the women's evolution, which is the pay-per-view coming up. Cool. The all women's pay-per-view titled evolution, which is very fitting. And I'm really excited to see who's all gonna be there because I know they mentioned people from the past, people from the future, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So who would be on your dream card if we could bring some people back? Uh, Trish and Lita, because I was never, hello friend, I was never able to um, work with them at the Royal Rumble because, you know, the curse of the champion. Uh, champions aren't allowed in the Royal Rumble match. So I got to sit ringside, which was really cool because it was like the nostalgia of the entrances and everyone coming back. And it was awesome getting to see it as a fan perspective. But I would really like to get into the ring with the girls that were in the Royal Rumble match. So hopefully that'll be my opportunity. For you. Well, the fact that you have this on your shoulder probably tells us you're going to be in the main event. Uh, I hope. I mean, I don't know what the main event's going to be, but it would be awesome. Well, I don't know if anyone knows what the main event's going to be no, right now. No one knows anything. We just know the announcement was made last week, and we're just along for the ride. How long before that announcement was made did you know that Evolution was in the works? At that moment, when it was... Really? Yeah, they didn't tell us anything. It was right when they made the announcement because they wanted our real reaction. So when Triple H and Steph go to the ring with a big announcement, are you like, oh my God, do we still have jobs? Like, uh, it's not like that. We're like, what's going on? Like we're, and you know, we always see like the stuff on Twitter about like the speculations of what it is. So we had no idea what was going on. Although the fans seemed like a lot of people like kind of guessed something like this. Us fans, I don't want to, us fans, fans in general are very, <laughs> are very smart. I feel like. I don't know. Were you the one tweeting what you thought it was? No, I was just no. like, oh, that seems pretty accurate. Yeah. <laughs> You seem to be having so much fun as a heel. Yes. It has it just, I mean, but you're so nice in real life. Thank you. What's it been like, you know, kind of tapping into that side of your personality? It's fun. You know, it's, it's very different to me. You know, I tried being a guy in the beginning and that did not work out very well <laughs> at all. And, um, you know, I just kind of think that when I was figuring out who Alexa Bliss was, you know, I wanted to be that girl from high school that everyone knew. Like I knew her. The one that is mean and bratty, but you still voted for her for homecoming queen because you wanted her approval, you know, just stuff like that. And it was just, it was stuff that I took from real life, you know, the, um, the movies. I always think of it as like uh, my week with Marilyn. Have you ever seen that movie? Yeah. So when Marilyn is walking down the stairs, she's being her quiet, reserved self. And there's these people downstairs, they don't even recognize her. And then she says, do you want to see me be her? And then she turns into Marilyn. And then everyone starts recognizing her and they're like, oh my gosh, and taking her picture. That's kind of like how I think about it. It's like a completely character shift in personality. And it's just a lot of fun because it's so extreme. 
Do you think that we'll see a baby face turn at some point during your title run? I can't imagine I will never not be a good guy. Right. Do you know what I mean? So I'm yeah. sure it's I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Will I be any good at it? Probably of not. Of course you will. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see how it goes. I, speaking of an evolution, like we saw you break in as like this pixie dust blowing, like completely different gimmick. That's me though. That's the thing. Like that was my <laughs> idea. Like I like love all things glittery and Disney. Like I was like, I want to be a Disney princess. And uh, that did not work. So that just shows that my creativity is not very good. <laughs> so where did the goddess character come from? Um, well, it started with Blake and Murphy. I was paired with Blake and Murphy and they're bad guys. And so I was like, okay, I need to really, you know, gear shift here. Um, and it helped me a lot being a valet with them because I didn't have to worry about matches while trying to portray a character. I got to focus purely on my character and that's what helped a lot. And you know, it was, it's been a, it's been a big process. And uh, as soon as I got to SmackDown, and I won the title, you know, they were calling me the Wicked Witch at WWE, if I beat a Fury, all those things. And then all of a sudden one day they just wrote in for me that I was a goddess. And I was think I remember thinking, I was like, nothing about me looks like a goddess. <laughs> but so I tried to, you know, portray like the dark goddess and the evil goddess, like how I how I did at WrestleMania. That was like my theme, because I do yeah. a lot of cosplay and stuff like that. And so that's kind of where it came from. It just started one day and I just kinda ran with it. Braden has. When the character starts to get developed in a different direction, like where do those conversations begin? Um, for me, it was just like you're joining Blake and Murphy, and we don't know what we're gonna do with your character. <laughs> so <laughs> good luck. It was like for me, I knew it was one of those. Um, well, I gotta run with it, or I'm probably not gonna have a job. <laughs> wow. Yeah, because as a as a good guy, I was never I was never booked. You know, I was yeah. never I was never used, and so I knew that. That wasn't working for me, so I knew that, you know, and I had debuted and then I had to work, I wasn't on NXT for almost a year after that. So I knew that, you know, I really needed to change and for the better and to run with this character, especially, you know, with WWE, if you don't run with the opportunities, a lot of times they don't come back. So it was one of those, like, gotta go. I know that Triple H is super hands-on with what's going on in NXT, yeah. so did he kind of help you mold and make the character what it is now? You know, Triple H is, amazing because I when I tried out for WWE he it was very strange like I I did a uh, casting call and there was they took us to LA and I was actually the only person who actually submitted my own stuff everyone else was there from uh, like talent agencies and there were models and I was I was there you know five foot of me walking around and there's these like six foot models they're all gorgeous in LA and I texted my mom I was like well that's it I'm not <laughs> I'm not making it but um I got to interview and it was with Triple H and all these all the producers and everyone and he saw something in me and my wrestling knowledge apparently I was one of the very few people to recognize him which was very strange I was like I was like I was like oh my god did you know you're Triple H like I had that like fangirl <laughs> moment and um you know, they oh. said they said that I was being signed after that, and they're like, "Let's just hope you're as athletic as you look." And so I was like, "Oh God, that's no pressure." So it was basically if, without Triple H seeing something in me, none of this would be possible. Oh, you know, you're supposed to do your research before you go to a job interview. Other people, okay? right, right, and like so. So that's Alexa Bliss covering some of our history, back how she got to WWE, everything else, with Chris Van Fleet. So she's mentioned that. Let's see what you guys have to say in the chat thus far. Let's see. Um, hey, you guys got a lot of comments there. Um, Carmel was a mediocre type of wrestler. I think we read before. Mommy is definitely cool and hip. They are so old school. We fab was absolutely stellar tonight. Yeah, she did look good. I'll give that to uh, be fast. 